Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2021 Watershed Congress. Uh, this is Friday, day four of our virtual Watershed Congress week, and we're happy that you're joining us today. The Watershed Congress is organized by the Delaware Riverkeepers Network in collaboration with many other organizations, such as Montgomery County Community College. My name is Michael Wyant, and I'm a member of the Watershed Congress Organization Committee and Assistant Professor of Geology at Montgomery County Community College. I am also your moderator for this session, connecting people to the Schuylkill River, the Schuylkill River Trail and Water Trail. We are pleased to present our speakers for this session. Julia Hurl, Schuylkill River Greenway's National Heritage Area, Donna F Fabry, Montgomery County Planning Commission, and David Stauffer, Chester County Department of Parks and Preservation. I'm gonna turn it over to Julia now. Uh, good afternoon, thank you for joining us. Uh, welcome to the Schuylkill River Watershed. Uh, of course, one of the watersheds that make up the Delaware uh, River Watershed. Um, our area reaches from Philadelphia and heads basically northwest up into the coal fields of Schuylkill County. Um, I'm here with um, representatives from Montgomery County and Chester County to talk about um, one of our signature projects, which is the Schuylkill River Trail that runs through the center of the watershed. The Schuylkill River uh, is also the center of um, the Schuylkill River National Heritage Area. Um, a heritage area is a, is a specific landscape in America that's designated by Congress. Um, it's kind of like a national park, a cousin to a park. And we are an area that tells a story about America. So in our watershed, the Schuylkill River watershed, the story that we're telling is the story of revolution. We are here to we talk about the American Revolution, much of which took place along the banks of the Schuylkill River. We talk about the environmental revolution. We talk about the industrial revolution. But today we're gonna to talk about trails. Um, I'm with the Schuylkill River Greenways Association and we, um, one of our goals is to connect people to the river. Um, by connecting people to the river, we foster um, community development and economic development by having people experience the river, hopefully close to where they live. Um, we engage them with events and all kinds of activities that bring them to the water. When people learn about the river, they, they start to use the river, they begin to love the river, and they themselves become stewards for the river, stewards for the watershed. Um, that is our goal. Um, and that community of, of stewards and, and participants in rivershed, in watershed activities, um, is what supports us and support, we support each other and both our environmental mission and our recreational mission and our community development. So uh, in our group with Schuylkill River Greenways, uh, the way we connect people to the river is through a lot of different programs. We use watershed education, direct watershed education, both for children, which is through um, school groups, summer camps, uh, also for adults, we have programs. We connect people through communication, through social media, letting people know what's going on along the river for ourselves and for our partners. Um, some direct environmental work, for instance, water quality monitoring and um, stream restoration projects that we do that uh, directly affects the watershed physically. And then we have all sorts of events that we run as, as a Greenway organization. But the most important things that we have that connect people to the Schuylkill River are the Schuylkill River Trail and the Schuylkill River Water Trail. Uh, the Schuylkill River Trail is planned to be 120 miles long. It will go through five counties, uh, Philadelphia, of course, Montgomery and Chester are on either side of the river there where the Schuylkill River flows through, and then Berks County, and then up north in Schuylkill County. Um, about 80 miles of that is complete. And the winner so far, I believe is Chester County in terms of how much of their trail is complete. Um, I think very shortly, they'll be at 100%, and Dave can talk to you about that. Uh, Montgomery County is currently at about 95% of the trail in their section is complete. In Philadelphia, they are at about 75%. And then up in Berks and Schuylkill, we have a little bit more work to do. We're about halfway done with those two sections. Um, the, there are many partners who manage and build the trail. Um, along its length. A couple of small spots are organized and managed by local boroughs, municipalities, but most of it is managed by the counties or the Schuylkill River Greenway. So Philadelphia takes care obviously of building the trail in the city. 
um, in Montgomery County and Chester County, the counties build, manage, maintain the trail for their residents as well as the region. Um, Schuylkill River Greenways manages, builds the trail in Berks County and Chester County. So we have sort of the top half section that we work on. Um, so each of us will be taking you through the, some of the major projects for this past year in our respective areas. All right. So for the Schuylkill River Greenways, um, here's a map just showing Berks and Schuylkill counties in, um, in the watershed. Um, and we wanna talk about three different kinds of projects that we're doing. So if you look here, the projects listed in sort of red uh, lettering, those are planning projects and design projects. Um, we have the Mill Creek section in the far north and in the top half of Berks County, we have a feasibility study we're working on. The green lettered projects, the ones in green, are construction projects. So these are things that are going on now. They're taking up a lot of our uh, efforts and time right now. And we're, we're seeing some um, movement on those. And then the blue, the blue uh, projects that are listed here in blue, those are water trail projects uh, that we'll touch on briefly. All right, so beginning in the north is the Mill Creek section of the SRT. Now this is a section, it's about the top five miles of where the trail will eventually go. This, this section ends just south of Brackville and it starts in St. Clair Borough. It's about five miles, uh, about a mile and a half of that is through the borough itself. And then the trail will go through Coal Creek Plaza, which is a large shopping plaza. Um, we have a route for the trail through the plaza. And then it will be on, it will go north from there on an abandoned railroad corridor. Um, it's a very beautiful spot. It runs directly along the Mill Creek. Um, we're looking for funding now for the design work for this project, which we've applied for a grant from DCNR, which we're hoping to receive to design the entire five miles. Um, we're also working on uh, easement acquisition from the Reading Anthracite um, Company, the, the family that owns the Reading Anthracite Company, and they've been very um, supportive of our project and are becoming partners with us. And right now, at this same location, PennDOT has a terrific project where they are relocating an historic railroad bridge, a bowstring truss. This is a bridge that had been in place in um, a nearby town. And in order to preserve it, PennDOT is moving it to this site to be used for the Schuylkill River Trail. Uh, it's not there yet. That's just a, a preliminary sketch that you're looking at. So that is our, our far north project. And then one of the biggest projects we're working on um, is the Auburn Gap. Now, as you leave Berks County and go into Schuylkill County, the existing trail comes up for about six miles and it ends at the Schuylkill River, where there used to be, and there still is, an historic railroad bridge. Um, this trail has been blocked there for many years. Um, if you see the, the picture at the bottom center here, that's what it looked like. No one could cross it. And there was no trail to cross to on the other side. So this project has involved rehabilitating that historic railroad bridge, redecking it, putting in railings. And then that was phase one phase of the project. The next phase, that's recently completed. The next phase of the project is going to be to build a ramp to connect that bridge back down to the ground and to a new trail that will bring us around to existing trail and connect that gap all the way through so that you can ride, for instance, on your bike from Hamburg up through the gap between uh, the gap in the mountains between Berks County and Schuylkill County up to Auburn Borough. So this is a very important gap that we're hoping to fill. Uh, we hope to plan, we plan to go out to bid soon with that project and have that done in about one year. Um, okay. Uh, closer to home, uh, here in Reading, further up in Reading, we've recently done a project called the Reading Gateway Initiative. This was a community um, organized project. This is an area of the trail that had gotten overgrown and there had been instances of crime through this area. It's on the outskirts of Reading. Um, and so with community uh, funding completely and community work and community effort, we've gone in and rehabilitated this entire section of the trail. We've painted the bridge, we've cleared out the vegetation, we have surveillance cameras going in. We've replaced the lighting so that it's well lit and it's a much safer area. We resurface the trail. It's a short section, but it's the section that takes the Schuylkill River Trail up into the city of Reading. So it's a very important spot. It's also an incredibly important commuter route. A lot of people coming out of Reading uh, to get to work, get to different jobs, uh, are using this route. So that's one of the uh, construction projects we've done that's really been community led. 
We're also doing, including in this area north, is one of our planning projects, the Schuylkill, um, sorry, the Northern Brooks Feasibility Study, where we're looking at the alignment of the trail between Reading and Hamburg. Uh, we're currently out with an RFP on that work, and we're hoping to hire a contractor soon to get that started. Our most fun project, only because I can, I can say that because we finished it on Monday, is the Whitaker Bridge. Um, this is a spot just north of Pottstown, uh, near Birdsboro, where there had been a crossing of the Route 724, which is a busy road, where cyclists and walkers had to uh, descend a steep slope, cross a busy road, go back up a steep slope, back to the original railroad grade, and continue on. And it was not an area that was um, handicap accessible. It was not an area where you'd want to bring your children. Um, it was not the safest crossing. So for years, this has been in the works. And finally, it's been culminating this week. We had our opening ceremony on Monday for the Richard Whitaker Memorial Bridge. Um, it's, the span is about 120 feet long. It brings everybody up on the road, the grade of the original railroad grade and brings people safely across Route 724. Um, we're hoping to highlight it um, in our, in our uh, ride for the river, which is coming up, excuse me, uh, tomorrow, which is a big event for us. So this is the bridge. It was built um, from concrete box beams and stone abutments. And we had one very fun thing happen with this bridge. Um, in order to lift the beams into place, they use a very large crane, which they build, they assemble on site. So when they came to assemble the crane, it didn't fit. They needed to get it, of course, off of the road and it didn't fit where they wanted to put it. So they had to dig further back into the bank than they expected. And they discovered the original abutments for the original bridge that went over, it was a railroad bridge that went over a canal. And the canal was where you see the road here. This was a canal at one point. So we now have exposed the original abutment walls, beautiful stone walls for that bridge. And we worked that into the design of this project so that people can, can see the history live in front of them. So those are our road projects. I did wanna mention, we're also working, been doing some work on the water trail, the water itself. The river of course is, itself is the water trail. It's a Pennsylvania water trail. And what we're doing here is trying to improve and increase the number of water trail landings that can be used by kayakers and canoers. Um, and what we're doing in several spots over the past year and a half or so, we've been putting in new landings or rehabilitating older landings that needed to have work done. And what we're doing with these to rehabilitate them and to bring them up a little bit is we're um, including handicap accessible parking and pathways so that everyone can access the water. We're, um, and of course, because of that, we have much more gentle uh, pathways to the river, which is helpful for people uh, carrying their boats, of course, but also anyone with mobility issues. It helps them get to the water where they can fish, launch a boat, whatever they wanna do. Uh, we're also, as part of that, using a system of concrete ramps that go in prefab, so we're not disturbing, we're disturbing the river itself as little as possible. We're not bringing any equipment into the river um, and we can build this very quickly without a lot of land disturbance. And then in addition to that, the areas around these landings um, often are parks, not always, and we're increasing the amenities that we have, parking, um, picnic tables, the kinds of things that sort of support the, the use of the landings and support people coming there to get on the water trail. So that's what we're doing uh, most recently here at Schuylkill River Greenways. And I would like to pass you over to Dave, who will let you know what's going on in Chester County. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Julia. Uh, the, the first slide I'm, I'm, I'm gonna bring up here is uh, showing the county's trail network. And uh, the Schuylkill River Trail is gonna be at the top of that map uh, where the River forms the boundary between Chester and Montgomery counties. Uh, this is actually an excerpt of the, the county's comprehensive plan showing the both the circuit uh, trail network and the, the plan to uh, have trails uh, built to uh, provide public access uh, to those regional trail facilities. Next slide, please. I, I wanted to include some numbers here. Uh, we, the county does have trail um, counters uh, out that, that we have on all of our regional trails, which are Chester Valley, Schuylkill River Trail, and Struble Trail. And I thought it was interesting just to share, if you look uh, what was happening in, in March of 2019, for example, on the Schuylkill River Trail, you can see our, our use counter was just below 2,000. 
So that's that's pre-pandemic level uh, use. And then you look at the next column to the right, you see in, in March 2020, our, our use count at that specific location where the counter is, uh, that, that doubled. And I thought it was interesting to also note that even into this year, it, it's a little bit lower than it was in March of 2020, but it, it's still significantly higher than uh, March of 2019. So I just thought that would be interesting to share with the group as well to show that, you know, if, if you're, if you are a trail user, you may have noticed there's a lot of people um, on the trails. Um, and, and I think that's, that's a good thing. So um, next slide, please. This map shows the uh, Scoop River Trail alignment through Chester County. Um, starting on the right, uh, the trail crosses the Montclair Bridge, um, which was recently upgraded into Phoenixville Borough. Um, once through Phoenixville Borough, that's where the county, Chester County, picked up the uh, responsibility for uh, managing and design and construction. Uh, so the, the red uh, line that you see in the middle of the map, which is shown as phase one, uh, that was a, a project that was uh, completed with uh, county bond fund and bond funds and uh, some DCNR grant funding. That was completed in um, 2011, and that's uh, just under six miles. On the left side of the map, uh, the alignment uh, you can see there in orange. Uh, that's what we call our phase two project, and that's been a that's been an important I'll say gap um, in, in the section of the Skook River Trail between. Um, Reading in Philadelphia. So it's, it's been on a lot of people's radar for, for a number of years. And um, it, it's certainly, it's been a county priority. I think it's been a, a regional priority. I think it's even been a, been a state priority. So um, the uh, main hurdle that the county faced with developing that section of trail is that um, all the right of way had to be acquired. The county didn't have any rights. Um, for the phase one section uh, from Linfield Road down to Crombie, the county had a 1982 easement agreement in place with PICO to allow the use of uh, the former rail quarter. Going north of Linfield Road, uh, the county had to work with approximately uh, 20 landowners to acquire um, easements and or right of way. And that had to follow uh, the, the, uh, the federal acquisition process, which um, entails appraisals, uh, peer reviews and, and things like that. So. Um, that, that project's been been one that we've been working on for a while, and, and I'm, I'm I'm glad to report uh, that it's uh, in construction, and 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 we're making significant process, progress there. Uh, next slide, please. As part of our phase two project, um, we went back in and we, we were able to use federal dollars to resurface uh, the existing trail. Again, that's just under six miles of trail, so. That the, the county's initial project was built primarily as a stone dust uh, trail surface, and, and that was done intentionally. The, the plan was always to pave the trail, uh, but due to funding um, constraints, we, we made a, a decision that it was probably more important to open more miles as a stone dust tra trail surface than it was to open a, a, a shorter trail segment that could be paved. So that's, that's I, I get it often asked, people often ask, you know, why, why didn't the county just pave it from the beginning? That, that was the reason why it was, it's really kind of a funding issue, but it was always the county's intent and it was certainly, you know, permitted um, to eventually be, be paved, which is uh, now something that's uh, for the most part, part complete. Uh, the only exception would be at the bottom of the map near the, the Crombie Trail plant. We had a um, threatened and endangered species restriction there. Um, so we're, we're now beyond that and, and we'll, we'll need to close that uh, short segment and, and the Crombie Trailhead at some point this fall. Uh, so that section can be paved. Next slide, please. Uh, these are just some photos uh, on the left. You can see the uh, recently paved uh, section of the trail that's been reopened to the public. On, on the bottom right, you can see the uh, trail as it was initially uh, opened, which is a, a stone dust trail surface. Um, the, the contractor came in and used the milling machine to, to uh, mill off um, a couple inches of that stone dust surface. And that material was just laid at the side of the trail. And then once they came in and did the paving, they used that uh, trail surface material to back up the, the trail shoulder. So you can see it again on the left, they, they gave us a pretty nice wide shoulder there. So that, that, that looks pretty good. Uh, next slide, please. The phase two project also includes uh, construction of four new miles of trail from uh, Linfield Road uh, north to the 422 bridge. There are two new trailheads that are being built as part of this project. Uh, the first is at Parker Ford. If you drive the 724 corridor, uh, you may notice they've, they've really started working there uh, within the last week or so. That's a major uh, 
earth moving activity. Uh, the contractor is building a parking lot for approximately 50 cars and uh, beneath the lot will be a subsurface stormwater detention facility. Um, so that, that's what the excavation is for that's happening there today if you happen to drive by. A little bit to the north um, is uh, Fricksock Village, which is on the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, the county has partnered with East Coventry Township to provide some trailhead parking there. Um, in addition to, uh, there's a, a building that has been rehabilitated and we've constructed a, um, a building addition which will provide public restrooms for trail users. Uh, that was a project again, that's uh, been in partnership with East Coventry Township and uh, PADCNR was also a funding partner on that particular project. As far as the trail project is concerned, uh, it is a, it's a PennDOT uh, bid project uh, using federal dollars, 100% reimbursable in this case, using the congestion mitigation and air quality funding through the Federal Highway Administration. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide shows a, a couple photos of, of the, uh, the more recent construction. So uh, the, the top right kind of shows the condition uh, of this quarter uh, prior to any construction. Uh, the, the, the photo on the left uh, was from earlier this spring. You can obviously see that you know, the trail has been cleared, graded, and is it, at that point is at the stone sub-base elevation and, and ready to be uh, paved with asphalt. Uh, another thing to notice there, as you can see, we're, we're at that point, we're still in the rail corridor. We're parallel to Route 724. And uh, from a stormwater perspective, I just wanted to note there, you can kind of see the, the swale on the left side of the picture uh, that, was, that was always there. Uh, but it was, you know, over the last 50 years or so, I'd silted in and, and, and really got kind of grown over. So as part of the project um, and part of the permitting for the project, we identified that as an opportunity. Uh, we went in and cleaned the swale, um, regraded it. Um, and then you can see there's a series of, of check dams, which are stormwater uh, best management practices designed to, to help kind of slow the flow and, and help aid in um, infiltration of stormwater. Finally, the, the, bottom, the picture on the bottom right is more, a more recent photo. You can see that the, the construction has progressed. Uh, the asphalt base course and, and wearing course are, are now in place. So that, that section of trails looking, looking pretty good to go there. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, there's still some work to go and a lot of people are, are trying to, are, are wanting to use it, but it is can still considered an active construction zone. The contractor still has to back up the, the edges of the shoulder um, in addition to installing uh, fencing, signage, pavement markings, gates, spoilers, that sort of thing. So, next slide, please. I just have a, a few more pictures of various photos along, along this uh, new four mile section of trail. The, the, the photo at the top left, that's, that's at the Fricksock uh, trailhead underneath a new pavilion that was uh, built there. And in the background, you can see the, the building that was been rehabilitated and you can see the new uh, restroom building addition. So that project's, uh, wrapping up and that'll be a nice addition for, for users along the trail. The, the picture on the bottom left, I included that one. I thought that's an interesting one too. Um, that section of trail that, that's looking south from uh, Towpath Park. And in that particular location, the, the trail is, is being built on the, the former canal towpath of the Schuylkill Canal. And that, that's one of the few spots um, in Chester County where the canal is watered. There's a, a short section there in Towpath Park. So you can see that watered section of the canal on the right. And then if you look through the, uh, the woods on the, the far left of that particular picture, you can see that the, the trail is gonna be built kind of between the old canal and the, and the river itself. And, and finally, the, the, the picture in the bottom right is, is that's, that's our goal. That's our, our destination it is the, the new uh, recently reconstructed 422 bridge, which will uh, carry uh, trail users uh, across the river into Montgomery County. So overall, the, uh, the county's uh, contract is about 75% complete. We anticipate the entire project being completed by the end of this year. Um, at that point in time, the, the county would look to take um, acceptance of the project and open it up to public use. Uh, there will be some, unfortunately, will be some work that uh, you know, will have to be done in the spring of next year. Some of the, the seeding, uh, landscape planting and things like that at the, at the trailhead. Uh, that'll be outside the, um, the, uh, the timeframes that, that are, are permissible under PennDOT regulations to install that, install those improvements. So, uh, but the, the lion's share of the work will be done this year. There'll be some a handful of things uh, done in the spring of 2022, and we'll look to have uh, a ribbon cutting ceremony sometime in the spring of 2022. So 
I think that was my last slide, Julia. I think, yes. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll turn things over to Donna. Thank you. Great. <clears throat> Thank you, Dave. Um, hello, everyone. Um, Donna Fabry, Senior Trails and Open Space Planner for Montgomery County. And um, I'll be presenting um, what we've been up to on the other side of the river uh, where Dave left off, as well as um, giving updates for some of the projects that um, have been completed or it, updates on projects in Philadelphia as well. Um, our partner, Rob Armstrong, wasn't able to, to be here with us, but um, we definitely wanna give a shout out for all the work they've been doing um, down at the Southern end of the trail. Um, next slide. So our biggest pieces, as Julia mentioned, were about 95% done with the trail in the county. Um, this last 5% is a crucial link um, that will enable trail users to, to say uninterrupted um, on the trail from Philadelphia to Reading when um, this is completed. So um, as Dave uh, alluded to, we had to go through land acquisition as well. Um, the properties here shaded in yellow have been acquired by the county. Uh, we wrapped up our last acquisition uh, in December 2019, and we're then able to tap into our DCNR grant funds to begin the design process. So we're currently a little over 30% um, uh, design. We have our preliminary engineering uh, completed. And right now we're, we're working through permitting. Um, this being along a river bank, um, there are uh, essentially uh, you know, pre-contact pre, um, archeological uh, evidence. Um, and I, I know Dave dealt with a similar <laughs> process on his side of the river. So we're working through that with the State Historic and Museum Commission. And there's also um, sensitive species that we need to um, work around. But um, we're progressing um, along and we anticipate having design completed right around the time that Chester, Val um, Chester County is opening their trail. And we're hoping to get right into construction so that we can um, get that completed um, as soon as possible uh, with hopefully the latest by early 2023. Um, so that's it for that piece. Uh, next slide. Okay, um, another exciting project that's going on is um, this renovation of the building you see here in, uh, we call this the Trail Junction Center. Um, so we're, we have an RFP out on the street right now looking for firms um, to work with the county to uh, develop the various uses, what this property could be. It's a very exciting location. It's, it, obviously at a junction where the star is of where the Chester Valley Trail meets the Schuylkill River Trail. Um, we just had a groundbreaking for the Chester Valley Trail last week. Um, we believe uh, that will be completed probably around the end of next year, um, but that will enable um, riders in Chester County to take the trail from Exton to Philadelphia, all the way up to Green Lane using our Perkyoman Trail. Um, so this is a really exciting connection. And, um, and we're looking for, as I mentioned, the, um, this facility to uh, enable trail related um, space, whether it's for events, as you can see, it's kind of like an amphitheater on the, on, on the right side, those are uh, steps and um, maybe other support facilities. And this is located in Norristown. Um, next slide. Okay, now I'm gonna shift into Philadelphia. Um, this is a really, well, very unique project. Um, the only one of its kind in North America. Uh, Rob Armstrong and the Philadelphia Parks Department have been working to um, renovate this swing bridge. It was a railroad swing bridge crossing over the Schuylkill River um, and Ultimately, this will enable a connection um, from the Bartram's Garden, Bartram's Mile Trail, also to um, the other side of the river um, to Gray's Ferry Crescent, and ultimately up to the Schuylkill Banks Boardwalk. Um, as you can see, it's, it's 
located between the University of Pennsylvania and Bartram's Garden. So it's this is a really popular section of trail and um, really unique. And um, there's a rendering. Um, next slide, please. Um, so this is the vision for what this crossing will look like in the future. So um, really involved project, but uh, will be a crucial gap in this, this network when it's completed. Um, so they are in construction. And I believe they're uh, sometime next year, it, it may be completed. Um, next slide. Um, moving a little further up the river into Northwest Philadelphia, another project underway is um, a diversion of the trail. Um, the trail uses the end of Main Street in Maniunk. It's an on-street uh, share road situation. And if you're familiar with the area, it's a very busy street. There's a lot going on. It's, it's not ideal uh, as a trail experience. So um, the city is uh, working to um, reroute the trail, joining at the Pencoid Bridge there on the left, and then running the trail along the back side of the property. Um, and concurrently, the city's also, or SEPTA is updating its uh, Wissahickon Transportation Center. Um, and so this will all be kind of redesigned um, and better facilitate um, trail usership and safety because right now it's uh, the trail essentially uses the sidewalk in front of the trans transit center and um, it, it can be pretty hairy <laughs> riding through there. But this uh, the trail will cross the Wissahickon Creek. This is also the gateway into um, the Wissahickon Trail to Forbidden Drive. So um, really gets a lot of high use. Um, so this will be a, a great improvement when it's completed. Um, and I believe they're they're still in design phase, so I don't have a date for completion on this one. Um, next slide, please. And then finally, um, a long awaited project is the lighting of the Maniunk Bridge. And what's really great about this is that it'll enable 24 hour access um, once the lighting is installed. So um, this bridge connects the um, Kinwood Heritage Trail in Lower Marion with the Schuylkill River Trail as it um, continues through Maniunk. Um, so this is really popular, um, again, segment of trail that gets a lot of use and uh, it'll, it'll be a real uh, amenity for those who want are trying to commute by bike um, because right now the trail closes at 6 p.m. Um, so opening it up will, will really help uh, make those connections. Um, and this is underway and they expect to um, have the lighting installed by the end of this year. Okay, I think that does it for my slides. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Dave, that was great. Um, let me turn this off. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to mention was that obviously we each have our own projects that we're working on in our own areas, but um, especially in the case of um, Chester Montgomery County working on that section of Pottstown, it all comes together. Um, uh, the support that we get uh, with each other and with other trail builders up and down the Schuylkill River, um, it's part of that community uh, that, that makes the whole watershed strong, that, that brings people to the river and um, creates a, a regional resource and um, asset from the Schuylkill River Trail. Um, so we appreciate that support and we get a lot done that way. Well, thank you guys so much. We have a few questions now. I'll pose them to all three of you and whoever feels like they wanna jump in, go for it. So our first question is, are you doing anything to encourage linkages for users of the Rover Trail and the Water Trail, like ways places to lock up bikes and boats so people can go from one from and use one and then the other in the same trip. Well, one thing that we're doing is trying to site water trail access in places where we have land trail. So at least physically the two come together. Um, we're doing that, uh, for instance, at Yarnell Park. We have a, a landing there, a park that we own. We've um, improved the landing there. And eventually we're looking now at the alignment of the trail in that area. So of course we'll try to connect the two so that we can share that experience. 
Um, and we also do uh, events that are called Pedal and Paddles, where people can ride upriver on a bicycle on the trail, cross over to the river, and kayak back down to the starting point. So we get that combination of land and water trail. Um, that's, what, that's what we've been working on. Excellent, thank you. The next question is, also you mentioned the sort of ladder of engagement from trail user to trail steward. Do you have opportunities for trail users to engage in trails stewardship? Do you see evidence of this actually happening or is it more of an assumed transition? Uh, well, we do. Um, we don't have uh, trail staff to do a lot of the work that we do. We use an army of volunteers, uh, both to patrol the trail, to do cleanups on the trail, to uh, do educational programming with us. Um, and we have several levels of volunteers. For instance, we have um, a group called the Trail Keepers. These are people who you know, can do weed whacking and, and use chainsaws and get out there when we need them to fix a problem. Um, something maybe maybe don't need to hire a contractor for, but we can have volunteers do that work. And that's, that's a tremendous kind of stewardship, stewardship for us. We also have a trail ambassador program uh, that I know connects also down to Chester and Montgomery County. The ambassadors are all over the place. And there are eyes and ears on the trail. They let us know what's going on, if there's a problem. They um, you know, help people who are new to the trail find their way. Um, so yes, we have a lot of uh, hands-on stewardship ways people can use the trail. Um, I won't speak for, for Donna or Dave. <laughs> yeah, um, and we have discussed developing some kind of ambassador program because we've heard how successful yours has been. Um, it's in the works. I don't have, um, most of our, uh, <laughs> is it done through county staff, um, but we are looking at trying to get Engage because you do get a lot of good feedback um, from the, the people who are out there. Good, good. Similar to Donna, I would I would add in you know in Chester County we're we're also looking you know we're we're trying right now we're trying to kind of revamp our volunteer program and I, I think that'll once we kind of get that back up and running I think that'll give us some opportunities to to work with with the trail users but um, yeah I think that's something that we're we're definitely looking forward to, um, you know, going forward, particularly when we have our new um, section completed and open to the public. And I would mention the other place we use a lot of volunteers is for our events. Uh, our two signature events are the seven day river sojourn. It takes where you paddle the entire Schuylkill River, it takes seven days. And we use a ton of volunteers, you know, at every stop of the way to help us with that. Uh, tomorrow is Ride for the River. It's our big bike event where it's a 40 mile bike ride. And again, we, we rely on volunteers to help run that and staff that because we're a, we're a small nonprofit. Excellent, thank you guys so much. And our final question is, uh, what is your process for engaging communities along the trails in your design and alignment planning efforts? I, I can speak to that one. So uh, for example, on the, the Chester County's uh, phase two project, we, we worked with um, our county planning commission and um, one of the municipalities and, and we, we hosted an open house uh, where we invited the public. Uh, I think we did a pretty good job of, of publicizing uh, the meeting. It was kind of an open house format where we had, uh, you know, our design engineer was there, some of the, the sub consultants that were uh, dealing with archeology, span uh, environmental issues and things like that. And it was, it was I'll say informal, because I think our, our goal was, you know, uh, we, we didn't want so much of a presentation where we were just looking more for for folks to come in um, and give us give us feedback. So it was it was kind of informal. I think it worked uh, fairly well. And I think at the end, you know, we we did a, a, I'll say maybe a maybe ten or fifteen minute kind of mini presentation. But the the real goal was to get get folks to to stop in and visit and, and give us feedback about what they what they thought about the project. We try to get uh, public involvement early on. Uh, at the early stages, especially of our planning projects. Um, for instance, we uh, did a feasibility study recently in Schuylkill County. We're beginning one now in Berks County for a trail alignment. And we start at the very beginning. We, um, we form steering committees and we form uh, councils to 
to steer the, the job, to help choose the consultants, to help uh, plan what the scope of the project is going to be. And we pull from the communities wherever we can, uh, certainly from our known trail partners in the communities, but also from trail users, uh, people in neighborhoods near the trail who perhaps are not trail users and would like to come on board. Um, and then we keep them as active as we can through the process. We also have some projects, for instance, the one I mentioned at the Reading Gateway Initiative up near Reading, where it was a community-led project. They came to us. The community came and said, hey, we really need to fix this up. We're going to raise money. We're going to get this started. You guys manage it. And that's what we've been doing. So uh, there's different levels of success in involving the public in planning projects, because some of them are, are quite long-term. Um, but I find that if you make the effort to reach out, we have been getting a lot of good response. And uh, I'll say that we also do, um, we try to get the public involved earlier on, especially in the feasibility study phase. And um, as Julia mentioned, engaging with the, the property owners. Um, and also um, we found that going, not only presenting at um, community meetings, but also if there's a general community event, um, we've started setting up uh, you know, a tent and maybe just having a map out there and finding that just getting people talking about the trail, um, finding out, do they use it? Um, we found that here in Norristown, we were out at one of um, their national night out event and some people didn't know how to access the trail or where it was. And so we had maps there and, you know, they, they, they were interested, they just weren't aware. So um, I feel like that's, even when the trail is there, they may not know about it. So it, it's a continuing process um, through development and, and afterwards. But we found that to be really successful too. Excellent. We have, oh, we have some new questions coming in. Um, on the trails that are built, what are the biggest challenges for maintaining them? Well, there's hurricanes. That can be a problem. <laughs> There's everyday uh, maintenance and then there are those special circumstances. Um, of course, funding for us is always a problem, uh, getting the funding that we need to keep everything looking good. Um, I, can't speak, I can't speak for everyone, but we find that um, bridges are very expensive to maintain compared to a uh, trail. So we do work on that. Um, and what we find is that it's the things that pop up. I was mentioning to my colleagues earlier that we have a sinkhole that developed near Reading on the trail. And we tried to fix it three or four times. We think we've got it now, but that's an expensive proposition. So a lot of times for us, it's, it's making sure we have the funding ready to go for emergencies, as well as um, you know, keeping the ongoing maintenance up so that we don't run into problems. I would add probably a, a, a big thing that um, we've had to deal with recently was um, you know, the, the damage to some of the, the woodlands that's uh, occurring due to the um, emerald ash borer. And I would imagine, I think Julia and, and, and Donnie are probably in, in the same position, but um, for our, the, the phase two uh, trail that's under construction, you know, by the time the contractor going in in the spring and done clearing, um, we just uh, maybe a month ago walked this walked the trail quarter again because during that time frame a lot of the, the really big ash trees had um, been impacted by the ash borer so we had to kind of go back in and do a secondary round of clearing and, and my, my concern is that's going to be you know ongoing um, you know we, we may have some trees that are now impacted and, and they just don't show the impact so um, I, I think that's something that, that seems to be an, an ongoing issue it's not something that you know, you typically think about it in terms of trail maintenance, but it, it, it has been a, a more recent issue that's definitely associated with, um, unfortunately, you know, invasive uh, pest. Yeah, we've, we've had, of course, had that same problem. We've been taking down hundreds and hundreds of ash trees for a couple of years now, and it is, um, it's quite an undertaking. The other thing that we've had um, a maintenance issue with, um, although it's a good thing, is we've had a lot of increased use on the trails. Uh, especially since the pandemic began, but also because we're starting to connect some of these things we've talked about today. And as we were hoping, we're getting more use on the trail, but with more use, there's more maintenance and you have to be prepared for that as you go forward. Next question is, uh, do you think the majority of trail users are hyper or local, like people who live direct, directly adjacent, or are they people who are traveling here to use our trails? 
Um, I don't have any statistics on that, but my feeling is that, you know, we have a tremendous number of residents who are local who use the same sections of the trail all the time. You know, what we think of as the regulars. And they're out literally every day. So there's that community, that community where they're using the trail as their local trail. And then we have areas where people are using the trail uh, as a commuter route. So they might be going a little bit further, um, and, but it's a regular use of the trail. But then we certainly also have events and um, often we hear from people who are from outside the area, they'll call us for information because they wanna come and use the trail. And they're saying what, you know, what parts are done, what's the best place to get on. Um, several times in the last few months, people have called saying, I wanna do the whole trail. I wanna do the whole trail from Prattville to Philadelphia. And I have to tell them it's not finished yet, but here's some routes you can do. You can do all of it and here's how you get around the other parts. Um, so we know we're getting a lot of interest from outside our region as well. I don't know if either of you have any numbers on that. I don't know that I have any numbers, but I, I, I tend to agree with you, Julie. I think it's a mixture of, um, of all different user types. And I think too, the other thing that comes to mind is I think once you get to a certain you know, critical mass, a certain length, you will get also get people that will travel uh, you know, uh, to, to ride from end to end. It's not something you know, at some point that you can do in, in one day. So um, that, that's again, people coming, um, from outside the area to, to use, use the trail. So I think that's uh, something that we'll probably see more of um, going forward. Excellent. And our last question for now, are you applying any elements of equitable trail access in your designs? Is there signage that reflects this? Uh, we are, um, and we're especially doing more now than we used to, which we're, we're proud of. Uh, one thing we're doing is as we're moving into new projects, for instance, we're doing a feasibility study now, we have an RFP out for, and we specifically made um, allowances in that RFP for the inclusion of diverse and inclusive communities. Um, so it, from the very beginning of the study of the, of the situation, we'll be making sure that we've reached out to different community groups, different individuals who have different mobility issues, um, different, um, they're from different communities, they have different ethnic background, uh, different languages. We're now making whatever signs we can make uh, bilingual. And that's, this is new for us, we're glad that we're doing this. Uh, we have a very uh, large Spanish speaking population, both in Pottstown and Reading, especially, and a little bit further up in Schuylkill County. And we find that, you know, just welcoming people in their the language they're most comfortable in to the trail, I think will be a, a big help. But some of those, those smaller things that we're doing as we can, and then as we go forward with planning, we're reaching out, which is, it can be difficult because it's, you know, it is sort of new for some of us, um, but we are reaching out and doing what we can to pull more people into the conversation. I, I would agree with that. Um, we have uh, put together a, uh, we're calling the Montgomery County Trail Access Diversity and Awareness Plan. And we had a lot of um, direct engagement with, um, our African American population and the Latino communities in Norristown and Pottstown um, to get their feedback. Um, and, and as I mentioned earlier, just to find out uh, what we could do to encourage use of the trail um, and understand why people don't use the trail. And, um, you know, maybe not everyone wants to use the trail, but we definitely want to make those who desire to feel welcome on the trail. So we are um, beginning to implement some of those um, looking at the signage aspect. And um, again, hoping that this Trail Junction Center can become a real community amenity and bring people to the trail and help you know, get them out on the trail and, and using it. Excellent, thank you guys all so much. I'm afraid it's time to wrap up the session, but I just wanna thank all our speakers once again for taking their time to share their expertise and knowledge with us th during this week of the Watershed Congress. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you all in person in Pottstown in 2022. Hope you all have a great afternoon. Thank you again, presenters.